A Shalom Akim. First and foremost, and give all praises and glory unto Yahweh, by Hashem Yahushai, by Hashem Rachak with us. Double honor is not the Elders, Apostles, or Great Millstone. The Elders, a Great Millstone, in her course. Peace and blessings unto the hopeful elect, the sincere servants of Yahweh, by Hashem Yahushai, serving him in truth and sincerity. Yes, yeah, so we're coming back with another lesson to spirit. This lesson will be based off of how Jacob will rule next. A lot of people wonder who's going to be ruling after pretty much. I mean, everybody has a sense that uh, America's you know going to fall. But everybody's wondering who's going to rule next. And, you know, a lot of people might think that Russia is going to rule next, that China is going to rule next. You know, uh, those are pretty much the top countries on people's list, which you got to go into the scriptures. You know, and pretty much the Bible gives you who's going to rule next. After the fall of Esau, Edom, starting with America, after the fall of America, the scriptures give you who's going to rule next. So read real quick. It says, Second Ezra chapter 6 and 9, where Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followed it. Or let's go ahead and start at verse 8. Yeah, so second Ezra chapter six and eight it says, And he said unto me, From Abraham unto Isaac, when Jacob and Esau were born of him, Jacob's hand held first the heel of Esau. For Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. Yeah, so Jacob is the beginning of the world that followeth. So what is this telling you? Esau is the end of the world. And what does world mean in this sense? World is referring out to an era, you know, a, a time period. So this current time period that we're in right now, currently Esau is ruling and he's living through his blessings that Isaac gave him within Genesis chapter 27. Isaac gave him, of course, the, the dew of heaven, the fatness of the earth and the rule over the earth with the sword. Of course, the modern day sword is, you know, these modern day weapons such as the, 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 um, the nuclear weapons. You know, in uh, pretty much what Esau's military and what pretty much Esau Edom, the so-called white man, he's able to go around all these countries, you know, around the, the uh, planet Earth. And he's able to, to take over these countries by the way of his sword, by the way of his uh, weapons, his military. But we are at the time when we are at the end of, of this era, this current age that we're in. So it says, for Esau is the end of the world. Yeah, right now we're living again in those end times. Right before Yahweh will make his return. You know, that final prophecy that we're waiting for. I mean, the scriptures say about how, you know, we're going to go through or how famines and pestilences and earthquakes and rumors of wars and wars will come upon the planet Earth, which a lot of those things are happening right now. But it's going to get even worse. But we know that final prophecy that we're waiting for until Yahushai makes his, or right before Yahushai makes his return is the implementation of the mark of the beast as spoken about in Revelation chapter 13 and 16. Which the mark of the beast is the RFID implant and Esau will try to mandate that. I mean, he will, he will mandate it and he'll try to make everybody take it. That's exactly when Yahushua will come back. Right when Esau's about to drink that new world order. You know, he, he's about to, you know, uh, pretty much get a taste of that new world order. Guess what? The Lord's going to come back to destroy Esau, you know, and everything and, and his entire rulership. Not only with the, uh, you know, the American Edomites and the Edomites who run America. You know, which is the elite international bankers. The Lord's also going to come back to take down all other Edomites, such as these within the EU nations and, you know, even uh, Russia, they're Edomites as well. And all these other nations, the Lord's coming back to take them down. It says, and, it, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. Yeah, so Jacob is the be beginning of it that followeth. So, what is the scripture telling you? The scripture is telling you that Jacob will be the beginning. Once the, this current age and era ends, which is Esau's era, his time to rule, which again, his blessing, Esau's blessing was meant to be a temporal blessing. 
It wasn't meant to be a, a blessing for eternity, eternity like Jacob received. Jacob is going to be the beginning of the next era, which is ultimately, which is really going to be the kingdom of heaven. You know, the time of the kingdom of heaven, Yahushua's rulership beginning. That's the new era and the new age. Guess what? So Jacob is beginning beginning of it that follow because the Lord's going to set up the Israelites to rule over all the nations. Getting Genesis chapter 27. And yeah, pretty much when you read Genesis chapter 27, we read how Jacob supplants Esau of his blessing. He disguises himself as uh, Esau. And Isaac pretty much thinks that or thought that he, he was Esau. So he proceeded to give the blessing of the firstborn, which ultimately that's what the Lord set up because the Lord didn't want Esau to have, to have that blessing. The Lord wanted Jacob to receive that blessing. So that's how the Lord set it up so that Jacob supplanted Esau. So it says, and this is his blessing. It says, Genesis chapter 27 and 26. And his father Isaac said unto him, come near now and kiss me, my son. And when he came, and kissed him he smelled the this or says and he smelled the smell of his raiment and blessed him and said see the smell of my son is as the smell of uh, of a field which the lord yahweh hath blessed therefore the most High give thee to do a heaven and the fatness of the earth and plenty of corn and wine yeah meaning jacob will have an abundance you know all the resources upon the planet Earth, and all every you know all the valuables, and again the dual heaven and finance of the earth, meaning riches and wealth. That's what Jacob will receive. It says in verse twenty nine: Let people serve thee, and nations bow down to thee. Be Lord over thy brethren, and let thy mother's sons bow down to thee. Curse be every one that curseth thee, and blessed be he that blesseth thee. And this was meant to be an eternal blessing. And this is a, was a blessing given on to Jacob. So yeah, right here, this shows you how Jacob will ultimately be have or be superior over all other nations. That's why when we read Deuteronomy chapter uh, seven and six, it says, "For thou art an holy people unto the Lord Yahweh thy power." The Lord Yahweh thy power has chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. The reader once again, it says, Deuteronomy chapter 7 and 6, For thou art an holy people unto the Lord Yahweh thy power. The Lord Yahweh thy power has chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. So Jacob will be a special people over all other people upon the planet earth, man meaning all the people meaning all the nations showing you that the Lord is only dealing with the Israelites and today we know the Israelites to be the so-called Negroes Native Americans Latinos because all of them fit the curses that's spoken about in Deuteronomy chapter 28 and 16 on down and and we also fit the blessings the scriptures say how again we're going to be a peculiar people and you know we're going to be the salt of the earth meaning that we're going to have the flavor that's why, you know, we're the best at doing everything, the best at sports, entertainment. You know, our people have invented so many things that Esau stole. And simply now Esau just put a patent on or put a patent on the things that we invented. And he's simply just uh, innovating, you know, the, the things that we really started. As the scriptures say, you know, the former of all things is Jacob, basically paraphrasing. So everything goes back to the Israelites, which is the Lord's people. So getting Isaiah chapter 14 and 1, it says, For the Lord Yahweh have mercy on Jacob, and yet choose Israel, and set them in their own land. And the strangers shall be joined with them, and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. Yes, yeah, so the Lord will have mercy on Jacob. Did it say the Lord will have mercy on Esau and these other nations? No. It says, and yet choose Israel. Did it say that the Lord will choose Esau and choose Moab and Ammon and Ishmael and Ham? No. The scriptures say how the Lord would choose Israel. Let's get that word for choose real quick in the Hebrew. So the Hebrew word is Bachar, which means to choose, to elect, decide for, to select, to appoint. 
So the Lord selected and elected the Israelites to be his people. That's why it says in Matthew chapter 1 how Yahweh Shai will come back to save his people. It didn't say all other people. When you read John chapter 3 and 16, that's, you know, the, the word for world in that uh, in that verse is speaking about the world of Israel. Because when you get that word for world within the Greek, it's the Greek word cosmos, which means orderly arrangement. Referring pr pretty much a, a group of people, you know, the same way how you would say world of hip hop or you'll say. Um, yeah, you know, the world of hip hop, you'll say Disney World or, or whatever. Obviously, you're referring on to everything that um, uh, refers onto those particular things. The same thing with world in that sense. Again, speaking about an, an orderly arrangement. It's not the same word as the other words used for within the Greek, you know, the, the New Testament to refer on to the whole entire planet Earth. The word, the word for world, cosmos, is again, is again an orderly arrangement. <clears throat> So it says, and yet choose Israel. So going back to Isaiah chapter 14 and 1, it says, and, and will yet choose Israel and set them in their own land. And the strangers shall be joined with them, and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. The strangers are referring unto the Israelite foreigners. As the scriptures say in Deuteronomy chapter 28, 64, the Lord has scattered us amongst all the nations. And there really that was a curse for us to be scattered amongst all the nations and be mingled pretty much with the heathen. Not being in the sense to where our bloodline is, is corrupted because ultimately your bloodline cannot be corrupted. You know, your seed can't be corrupted. Ultimately, our seed is determined by the house of our fathers. Numbers chapter 1 and 28, or luck. Numbers chapter 1 and 18 goes to how what we are, our nationality, our seed is determined by our father's house, our father's lineage, the pedigrees of our fathers. Meaning that our mother has no influence about on our bloodline or our nationality. Yes, she has an appearance or influence about how we look and our appearance on the outside. But again, what you are is determined by your father and, and his lineage through his father's side. So it says, verse 2, And the people shall take them and bring them to their place. And the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord Yahweh for servants and handmaids. Read that again. It says, and the people shall take them and bring them to their place. And the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord Yahweh for servants and men, handmaids. Who's them speaking about? They're speaking about the heathen. These other nations, which ultimately, again, going back to that blessing that uh, Isaac gave, gave unto Jacob, which was, again, uh, Genesis chapter 27 and 29. Let people serve thee and nations bow down to thee. Be Lord over thy brethren. Let thy mother's sons bow down to thee. So ultimately, these other nations will were set up to be servants unto the Israelites. That's what they were set up to do ultimately. It says, shall possess them in the land of the Lord Yahweh for servants and handmaids. And they shall possess, or like it says, and they shall take them captives, whose captives they were, and they shall rule over their oppressors. See? So, and they shall take them captives whose captives they were. And yeah, as we know throughout history. And even now, the Lord has put us in captivity for our disobedience towards him. Throughout history, as soon as we went off, we started being wicked and serving false gods and pretty much just being wicked unto the Lord, you know, committing uh, spiritual fornication and adultery unto the Lord. Guess what? The Lord punished us and, and put us in captivity under these other nations currently right now we're in the um we're we're in the american captivity you know for us brothers here in babylon i mean really everybody's subject onto the babylonian captivity because america is in, in power right now so america's philosophies and ways america's ways have gone out amongst the planet earth so really everybody's being oppressed by america but what the point is is that the israelites really were not supposed to be in this captivity man we're not we're not supposed to be slave or you know we really we're, we're not supposed to be slaves but again we are ultimately because the lord put us in captivity for our disobedience towards him and what the so-called white man he's our oppressor currently you know we've been through many captivities 
such as Roman captivities, which again, Romans were Edomites, the ancient Romans. You have, of course, the Assyrian captivity, you had the Egyptian captivity. You know, we've been through many captivities, but the current captivity that we're in right now is uh, the, again, you know, I mean, right now we're under the Edomites. So it says, and they shall take them captives, whose captives they were, and they shall rule over their oppressors. So, so anybody who took the nation of Israel captives, guess what? They're going to be captives under us, which, I mean, pretty much extends on the all nations. They all pretty much had us in captivity. So they're going to go into captivity. Starting with Esau Edom, because he gave us the worst captivity out of all. It says, and they shall rule over their oppressors. And who's our oppressors, man? You know, nobody asks these questions. Who's the nation of Israel's uh, oppressors, the, the real Israelites. That's time with the Edomites, the so-called so white men. Verse 3, And it shall come to pass in the day that our Lord Yahweh shall give thee rest from thy sorrow, from thy fear, and from the hard bondage wherein thou was made to serve. So the Lord will give his servants rest, what, from thy sorrow? Currently we're experiencing sorrow. We've been experiencing sorrow. From the beginning of the days of slavery. 1619, 1492. You know, that was really when the bulk of slavery began. It says, from that fear, from the hard bondage, man, that was made to serve. Yeah, we're still in that hard bondage, man. And, you know, we've been going through that hard bondage. So ultimately, we're waiting for Yahweh Shai to come back to deliver us from this hard bondage. Which it will happen. You know, those will be part of the elect. The elect will be the first ones to take or the taste of the kingdom of heaven. You know, the, to, yeah, to to um to be saved and to be brought onto the kingdom of heaven. That's what the elect, or that you know, the, the elect will taste of it first. The two thirds of the nation of Israel and the wicked Israelites still have to die on this side. They won't receive salvation. Ultimately, they're going to come back through the seed of the elect, but they're just going to have to be destroyed. You know, uh, on this side. So this is Revelation chapter 2 and 26. It says that he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end. To him will I give power over the nations. This is referring unto the Israelites. The, the, the Israelites who overcome and keep the Lord's works unto the end. Because again, only the Israelites have the ability to serve the Lord. According to how the scriptures say to serve the Lord, only the Israelites have the ability to do that. Ultimately, you can't serve the Lord without, you know, um, going off what the scriptures say how to serve him. It says, and he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations. And power, when you get that word for power, well, let's go ahead and get it. Power. Strong's G, 1849, Exousia, 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 meaning, it says, the power of rule or, or government, the power of him whose will and commands must be submitted to by others and obeyed, the power of authority, influence, and right of privilege, see, so this is speaking about a, a power meaning a rulership, a rule, a dominion. When you get that, you know, when you get the New Testament version, the word for power, or at least in, in uh, my translation, it is mashal, which means dominion and rule. It says over the nations, and when you get that word for nations within the the Hebrew, or you know, you get the the Hebrew tr translation of the New Testament, it'll be the word gawayim, which. Is, you know, uh, Gawaiim is mainly referring on to Or usually it, it refers on to the heathen nations And again all of this connects man All of this connects to each other You know Isaiah chapter 14 and 1 And all the other scriptures says that say that How the Israelites will rule over all other nations Guess what they, they all connect So it's no Denying it Getting the next verse, it says, Revelation chapter 20, 27, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers. 
even as I receive of my father. Read that again. It says, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. When you get that word for rod, within the Greek, it's a Greek word, rabdos, which means, it says, with a rod of iron, in, uh, indicates the severest and most, yeah, the, indicates uh, the severest and most rigorous rule. Because compared to what all these other nations gave us, we're going to give them a much harsher rulership. They're going to ultimately they're going to be under us for a thousand years. Esau will be under us for a thousand years, and the rest of these other nations. Esau, after those a thousand years, Esau will be exterminated and be burned up by fire. But these other nations, you know, after the hard, hardcore bondage and slavery that they all have to go through in captivity, and during that time period, they're going to be land or learning the ways of the Israelites, which the ways of the Israelites are the law, laws, statutes, commandments of this book of Yahweh by Shem Shai. They're going to have to learn on that. Or learn of those commandments They won't be perfect Like the Israelites are going to be perfect Because the Israelites will receive The new perfect bodies But after You know they're, they're going to Have to strive to be perfect But they won't So whenever they sin And go off Then they're going to be punished But after those a thousand years they're, they're going to be able to go back Into their lands You know having Pretty much the, the law of the commandments or you know, uh, being able to keep them and know, or you know, uh, pretty much living in the law, statutes, and commandments, they're gonna be able to go back to their own lands. But it's gonna take a thousand year period for them to completely get immersed within again uh, our customs. Yeah, they won't be perfect like the Israelites. You know, the Israelites will receive, won't won't ever sin again. But they're gonna ordain themselves out of their law, statutes, and commandments. So, yes, yeah, says and he should rule them with a rod of iron as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I receive my father. And Yahweh shall receive that of his father. You can read that in Psalm chapter two. How do, the Lord have or how the Lord gave the heathen to Yahusha as an inheritance. Ask me now this day and Yah and yeah, quoting that scripture and Yahusha or Yahweh, the heavenly father gave it unto his son, Yahusha, the inheritance of the heathen. Beginning Obadiah chapter 1 and 15, it says, For the day of the Lord Yahweh is near upon all heathen. As thou hast done, it shall be done unto thee. Thy reward shall return upon thine own head. See, so the day of the Lord Yahweh is upon all the heathen. Starting with Esau Edom, that's who's on the top of the Lord's list. Or that's who's on the top of the Lord's list. It says, As thou hast done, it shall be done unto thee. Thy reward shall return upon thine own head. So, again, as the heathen have done unto the Lord's people, it's going to be done unto them. It says, Thy reward shall be done, shall return upon thine own head. For as ye have drunk upon my holy mountain, the Lord's holy mountain is the Israelites. It says, So shall all the heathen drink continually. Yeah, they shall drink, they shall swallow down, and they shall be as though they had not been. Five pound Mount Zion shall be deliverance, and there shall be holiness, and the house of Jacob shall possess their possessions. Yeah, see? Going back onto how the Israelites will have the dew of heaven and the fairness of the earth. Also, you know, they're going to have the other nations. Everything that they own and have, they're going to get that as well. So, yeah, Lord's will you bless us the edified. Yahweh, Bashem, Yahushai, Bashem, Kakura, Shabbat, Shalom.